From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. After a rough start on day number one, day two at the Hazleton Area High School went a little smoother with students in class on time. How district officials worked out some kinks in the new security protocol but didn't have to back down on the crackdown. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us everyone. I'm Kristen Bazinski. Well, we will talk about day two at the Hazleton Area High School in just a moment, but first one person is dead after an accident in Hazel Township just a short time ago. It happened along Route 924 between the Harwood entrance and the ramps to 81. We know that only one vehicle was involved and there were two people riding in it. One person was pronounced dead at the scene. The other was flown to a trauma center with what were described as serious injuries. Now, one of those two was ejected from the car. The vehicle ended up in a wooded area off of 924 and parts of the vehicle scattered the ground. State police have Route 924 shut down to all traffic at this four o'clock hour. State police say it looks like speed played a role in this accident. We hope to have more at 430 about this Hazel Township fatality. Some opening day glitches may have delayed the start of class Thursday morning, but how did the Hazelton Area School District perform the second time around? Administrators are more than pleased with students and staff members for their quick yet accurate performance. Students were inside the buildings 30 minutes earlier than the first time around. Administrators explained to News 13 how this was accomplished. They now know what to expect. They were actually ready today with uh, some, some of them had like kind of kind of like a sandwich bag. So it was see through and they put their jewelry, their belt and anything that would set off the metal detector so they were more efficient, they got through more, more readily. We were able to add additional metal detectors and an additional entrance in the front of the building for the females. The two additional detectors and the additional entrance certainly helped us get the females through in a more expeditious manner. Uh, the staff actually is, is looking at maybe a couple of more tweaks that they can make. Uh, and, and I was fortunate enough having seen a couple of places that I pointed a couple of things out to them this morning that they were going to talk about today um, to try and, and make it a, a, even a better process. And I must say that students and staff have been very appreciative and in fact have thanked us for putting the detectors in place. They said they now feel safe in school. Principal Rocco Patron also visited several classrooms Friday morning to let students know their safety comes first. Patron adds this year classes will be longer, time in the hallway will be shorter, and academics will be at their finest. In addition, another metal detector will be added to the high school building next week, specifically for male and female athletes. This will be the third extra metal detector added to the building and should speed up the process even more. Several parents waiting for their children to come home from their first day of school got a little scare after the school bus didn't show up. A bus that was scheduled for a double run at Heights Terrace Elementary School in Hazleton never came back for the second batch of students. Approximately 50 students had to wait in school for almost an hour until the bus was called to come back. Hazleton area school district administrators say it was miscommunication between the district and the driver. And this is not an unusual circumstance, believe it or not, for the first day or even the first few days of school, especially with double runs. It has happened before. No students were lost. Everyone was accounted for and everyone did get home. They were obviously getting home 50 minutes later than expected. Well, by the time they got in touch with the, with the driver and, and had him turn around and go back uh, to the school, um, there had been a couple of calls that were made to transportation. Uh, how many? I don't have the exact number of calls that were made. Uh, at that point, students were again loaded onto the bus and sent uh, on their way. I know the secretaries in transportation uh, called some of the parents. Do I know that they called all of them? Uh, I don't uh, because I didn't monitor every call that was being made. But they did uh, make an attempt to contact. My understanding is the majority of parents uh, of the students that were um, that were uh, involved in the, in this you know this mistake that was made 
Um, unfortunately, what happens is some of the parents are waiting at the bus stops for students, so when you call their home, you don't get anyone. Boundary changes and new routes could have sparked Thursday's confusion. The bus showed up for the second batch of students about an hour late, but until kids actually got home, it was even later. Administrators do not plan on this mix up happening again and say that the driver will not be terminated. A man from Drums was arrested for selling drugs from his home on Chrisman Lane. The Standard Speaker today is reporting that Butler Township Police, along with Luzerne County's Drug Task Force, started investigating 59-year-old Dwayne Welsh back in June and that he was selling methamphetamine from his home but was not making it there. Police say they conducted two controlled purchases of meth from Welsh at his home. He now faces a long list of drug charges and was sent to prison, but a check of the county prison today showed that Welsh is no longer an inmate. His bail was set at $50,000 by Judge Danny O'Donnell on Sunday. Welsh awaits a preliminary hearing before Judge O'Donnell. Also in today's standard speaker, and this time in Schuylkill County, two people were arrested for allegedly selling heroin to police in Tamaqua. Police teamed up with the Schuylkill County Drug Task Force and arrested 26-year-old Crystal Milner of Tamaqua and 31-year-old Jacob Bynan of Lansford. Both were sent to prison after their initial court hearing back on August 22nd. Their bail was set at 25 grand each. Well, squealing tires led to a man flashing his privates to a woman in Hazel Township. Troopers arrested 22-year-old old Adelso Hernandez Jr. Thursday afternoon after he allegedly got into a verbal dispute with a woman who accused him and his friends of squealing their tires in the parking lot of the Hazelton Apartments. Troopers say Hernandez then exposed his genitals to the woman. Hernandez faces charges of open lewdness, indecent exposure, and disorderly conduct. A traffic stop in the city of Hazelton Thursday night landed police more than just a citation, 250 bags of heroin and some marijuana. All were found in that vehicle. Behind the wheel was this man, 24-year-old Edwin Robles of Bronx, New York. Police stopped his vehicle on South Wyoming Street near East Elm Street around 10.30 Thursday night. At first, police say Robles gave them a fake identification. Robles was taken into custody and a search by police revealed the drugs. Tonight, Robles is locked up in the Luzerne County Prison. He faces multiple drug charges along with giving a false ID and resisting arrest. Coming up on News 13, do you want to take a trip to China? If you do, stay tuned, we'll tell you how. Plus, he dominated the football field in high school and college. Now a hometown native is making a name for himself in the NFL. More on Nate Eaches coming your way with Freddie B. It's time for Movie Minute on News 13, your weekly look at what's playing at Regal Cinema 10 just outside the Laurel Mall. New to theaters this week, Lawless, the true story of the famous Bonder and Brothers, bootlegging siblings who made a run for the American dream in Prohibition era Virginia. Also hitting theaters this week, a movie for the kids, Oogly Loves. The film follows the Oogly Loves, Gooby, Zuzi, and Sufi as they set out to find five magical golden balloons in time for their good friend's surprise birthday party. And if you like horror films, the possession may be for you. Shortly after her parents' divorce, a young girl purchases an antique box at a yard sale. And in the weeks that follow, she forms an intense fixation on the box, her behavior growing increasingly bizarre. And finally, 2016, Obama's America. In this movie, filmmakers attempt to uncover the truth about the controversial politician's past. For all the showtimes at Regal Cinema 10, call 450-7454. Or to speak to a movie attendant, call 450-7340. And to find the entire Regal Cinema schedule movie showings, head to our website, ssptv.com. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. and Ron Marchetti. Well, you might get an argument from some people, particularly those that watch high school basketball, but tonight, high school football, the lid lifter, it is uh, probably without argument the most popular of all of the high school sports, and it gets underway tonight with a bunch of games, some of the very interesting, including the Hazelton area Cougars. Going on the road, they're going to go to Scranton where they invade Scranton Memorial Stadium to take on the Scranton Invaders. And Coach Jim Drumheller 
Well, uh, there's always those opening night jitters. Scranton is supposed to be one of the better teams in all of Northeastern Pennsylvania, and that's the draw for the Cougars. But uh, the coach feels that they've worked hard, and the Cougars are ready to go. There's no doubt we're ready. We've been hitting ourselves for the last three weeks, and, you know, we had two good scrimmages. Now it's time to see what we have uh, for real in, uh, in a game situation. This team's been together since the middle of December and all the off season in the weight room, all, of, all those mornings and nights down here conditioning in that, and three weeks of camp. Um, they've grown as a team, but they're also growing together as a family. So that's one we'll be keeping our eye on. Let's take a look at the schedule. There it is right there, Hazleton at Scranton. Down in the Schuylkill League, you got uh, Monway at Panther Valley. Marion opens the season against Lee Heighton. Meanwhile, this should be a very interesting game. Shenandoah Valley and North Schuylkill. Keep your eye on that one. Tamaqua, Jim Thorpe. There you go. Down the line, the rest of the opening week schedule. Cougar fans, keep an eye on Tunkanic Coughlin. Coughlin, the week two opponent for the Cougars. Now, on Saturday, two games of interest. The Spartans of Valley West, they're back against the Dallas Mountaineers. And, of course, this is going to be the first time in a long time, no Teddy Jackson in the back mountain. So we'll see how that pans out. Pittston, Abington Heights, well, it used to be the Cougars for a long time that opened with Abington Heights, changing the schedule there, so it's the Pittston Patriots. Now, the rest of the schedule, there's other stuff going on. Golf, Hazleton against Dallas Lake Lehman MMI. We've got uh, boys soccer, Valley West in town to take on the Cougars. MMI is on the road at GAR. Meanwhile, in girls soccer, Hazleton area, they're at Spartan Stadium. Valley West not playing football tonight, so it's soccer up there in Kingston, and the Lady Cougars are in town. Must be a big Valley West day because in tennis, they're here to play Hazleton area, Wyoming area at MMI, and in volleyball, MMI at North Pocono. Some of the scores from yesterday, Schuylkill League Golf, Tamaqua gets by Jim Thorpe, and same two teams in tennis, Tamaqua. Did it to them on the courts as well, 4-1 in the best of five. In the NFL last night, well, Nate Eaches did it again. 99 yards on 21 carries. You parlay that with the 98 yards he got in the game before that, you got to believe that at uh, 7 o'clock tonight, when they make the final cuts, Eaches should be a Kansas City Chief. But you never know. Let's wait and see. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it all works out for the former Cougar. Meanwhile, Russell Kanzler didn't play as Columbus team. 2-0 winners over Louisville. Kyle Landis didn't pitch. Altoona gets by Akron and scranton wilkes bear shut out Lehigh Valley. There is your schedule for tonight in the International League. And uh, enjoy the first week of high school football. And tonight's sports brought to you by our friends at Stripes and Strikes. Hey, make the right call because... You're looking for all of the accessories that go with the fall time of the year. You better check out Stripes and Strikes. They've got the Holloway Varsity Wool Jackets, and that's the uh, Tackle Twill available down there as well. So that's the place. Custom printing on any of it. And don't forget, gift certificates are available. Free left chest embroidery on any Majestic, Nike, or Rawlings items too. That's down at Stripes and Strikes, 1348 North Church Street. It's across from Janetti's Best Western. The last day of August is almost over, so hello September and hello football season. It all starts tonight, but let's wrap up the last seven days first. Japan beat Tennessee to win the Little League World Series. The Red Sox and Dodgers completed a, a mega deal that sent Adrian Gonzalez, Josh Beckett, and Carl Crawford to the Dodgers for James Loney, Alan Webster, Ivan DeJesus Jr., and two players to be named later. Boston also sent reserve infielder Nick Punto and about $11 million in cash to the Dodgers. Curtis Granderson of the Yankees hit his 200th career dinger. Switching to football, the Bills released veteran quarterback Vince Young. The Seahawks released veteran wideout Terrell Owens. The Redskins released veteran tight end Chris Cooley after eight seasons with the Skins. Our area's Nate Eaches had a very good game for the Kansas City Chiefs last Saturday, running for 96 yards and one touchdown. And last night, each has carried the ball 21 times for 93 yards. He really looked tough against the Packers in Lambeau Field at Green Bay. His final carry last night went for 11 yards. Now, this taping was in the morning. The final cut is taking place today 
Teams are going from 78 players to 53. Hopefully Nate has survived this final cut that would make him officially a Kansas City Chief in the NFL on opening day. He certainly made a good account of himself last night to stick with the team. I watched every play last night on the NFL Channel 28. Freddie B may have already told you the result of the cut. Staying with football, remember this scene when December 19, 1948, the site, Shy Park, Philadelphia. The weather, bad, real bad. In fact, a blizzard. The reason, NFL championship. The result, Philadelphia Eagles 7, Chicago Cardinals, nothing. The hero, this guy. The first football star I ever heard of, Steve Van Buren, who scored this game's only touchdown. Van Buren, the Hall of Fame running back who led the Eagles to NFL titles in 1948 and 1949, died last weekend at the age of 91. He also scored the only TDs in the 1949 championship game at the Coliseum in Los Angeles against the Rams. A torrential, torrential rainstorm was the complication that day, but it didn't stop number 15 as Van Buren ran for 196 yards in the mud and two scores as the Eagles made it two in a row with a 14-0 win. Few fans alive today saw him play, but Steve Van Buren might have been the best player of the, past, of the post-war 40s. Barroom historians like to debate whether Van Buren or Chuck Benerick were the greatest Eagle of all time. It's definitely debatable, but I like them both. Hazel and Ari opens their football season tonight at Scranton. Marion is at Lee Heighton, and Berwick is at Crestwood. Life without Joe Paterno starts tomorrow at Beaver Stadium, and Notre Dame and Navy play tomorrow morning in Dublin, Ireland. Kickoff is at 9 a.m. I'm off on Labor Day, but I'll see you next Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody, and be a good sport, and uh, stay loose. Ronnie, Freddie, thanks so much. See you at 430, Fred, but right now you're winning midday lottery numbers. Daily number 017, big four, two seven. Two, four, Quinto 94492 and Treasure Hunt 269 1623. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First, tonight, happy anniversary to Sam and Deb Lassand. This which comes with love from your family, friends, and all of us here at SSP TV. Also tonight, happy 55th anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. George Lazar of New Coxville. This which comes from your family and friends. Happy 21st anniversary to Lorraine and Frank Brocious from Courtney and your family. We're still celebrating back to school photos. This one's five-year-old kindergarten student, Yomar LeBron. He's a student at Heights Terrace Elementary. And one more, Yanalise Mateo. She's eight years old and in third grade. That's tonight's social news. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Jacqueline A. Otterbein, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. at the St. John Bosco Church. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Gary M. Ford of Drums. All services will be private and will be held at the convenience of the family. Edward Forker of Mahanoy City. Arrangements will be announced by the Louis D. Truskowski Funeral Home. And Frank J. Stanolis of Shenandoah. The Lukovitz Orvitzfell Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for second best when dining out. Discover Mia's new low-priced dinner menu. And remember, there's plenty of free gated parking behind the Markle Building. Well, it's a chance to see the Great Wall of China, Tiananmen Square, and the Forbidden City. A trip of a lifetime filled with exploration and excitement. The opportunity to take a trip to China is coming from the Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. Those interested in the nine-day trip met with chamber members Thursday evening to learn important details. The trip to China will take place in the spring of 2013. It's open to chamber members, their families, employees, and the general public. Um, so much you can't possibly imagine. Um, it is a very, very full itinerary on the trip. Um, you get to see the Forbidden City, you get to see Tiananmen Square, uh, the Great Wall, uh, which is, is an absolutely phenomenal experience itself. So many other cultural sites in China. Um, you'll, be, you'll see Beijing, you'll see Shanghai. Like I said, it's a, it's a very, very full itinerary. Um, the deadline for 
final registrations and payment for the trip is uh, December 28th. Um, so there's still plenty of time to book for the trip. I have all of the information on the itinerary, uh, what's going to be covered, every, everything you could possibly want to ask about the trip. And it's not too late to sign up for this trip of a lifetime. For more information, you can call the Chamber Office at 455-1509. This trip will take place April 11th through April 19th, again in 2013. Moving on tonight, TGIF everyone, the Labor Day weekend has finally arrived. Many will turn to outdoor activities for their last weekend of the summer season. So let's check on that forecast beginning tonight in Schuylkill County, where we will see mostly clear skies and the temp will dip down to 62 degrees. Another hot one on your Saturday, sunny skies, 84 will be our high in most of Schuylkill County. Moving along to Greater Hazelton, this creative condition comes to us from Gabriella Bastanini from the West Hazelton Elementary School. Gabriella may just be right when it comes to the weather headed our way. She's showing us sunny skies with a little swirl up there in the tree. Very cute, mostly clear for tonight, low down to 59. For your Saturday, look for it to be a high of 78 degrees and a sun filled sky. Your forecast tonight brought to you by Just Windows and much, much more. 636-1133 on 1st Street in Freeland. Remember, better windows plus better installation equal Just Windows. You can visit them on the web at justwindowsandmore.com. All right, stay with us. We have much more local news, more sports, and lots of information coming your way in just a few. One person is dead and another is being treated at a trauma center at this hour after a horrific accident in Hazel Township. It happened just a short time ago on Route 924. We have the very latest right now on News 13. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazelton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Hi again, everyone. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bozinski. One person is dead after an accident in Hazel Township that happened right around 2.30. It happened along Route 924 between the Harwood entrance and the ramps to 81. We know that only one vehicle was involved and there were two people riding in it. One was pronounced dead at the scene. The other was flown to a trauma center with what were described as serious injuries. Now, one of the two was ejected from the car. The vehicle ended up in a wooded area off of 924. Parts of that vehicle scattered the ground. Now, police shut down Route 924 to all traffic, but we are told it is back open at this 430 hour. State police say it looks like speed may have played a role in this accident. Thanks to an anonymous tip line set up by Hazelton police, the community is directly helping cops crack down on crime and clean up the city. The idea is simple, but the tips given to police solve complex crimes. Although it's called the drug tip line, any criminal behavior is helpful to police. Hazelton's top cop, Chief Frank D'Andrea, says the tip line rings off the hook. There are times where you can't leave a message because the recording machine, the recording device tape is full. The drug tip line is a phenomenal tool. Again, it becomes our eyes and ears. It becomes, um, it multi it's a force multiplier. It takes what I have in the limited resources in my narcotics unit, and incidentally, my narcotics unit does a phenomenal job, but they're overworked. You know, it's not nice to say, but there are just, Drugs run rampant in the city. I'd like to say that the drug tip line is a phenomenal tool. It, we use it constantly. I can't say we use it every day, but we use it constantly. Some days we'll get tips on that tip line that will help us with several investigations. Mm -hmm. Other days we go a day or two and it's just all new information. And I don't want to downplay the new information right. because you have to start somewhere. Sometimes we get information on something we never expected. Now, Chief DeAndrea says the problem is that the flow of drugs into Hazleton is larger than the arrests of drug activity that goes out. Now, police gain valuable information through the drug tip line. All callers remain 100% anonymous unless they choose otherwise. Chief DeAndrea reminds those who already take advantage of the tip line that after a tip is called in, the caller will not know if and when the investigation happens. 
New on News 13, school pools are back open in the Hazleton Area School District after they were shut down last year to save money. And now, not only will the elementary and middle school students be able to dive right in and learn to swim, children all over the area will be able to take a dip thanks to a new partnership. The district and the Hazleton YMYWCA have teamed up to offer various after school and nighttime programs for children in the area at the district's pools. Shutting down the pools stirred up some controversy. Many were not happy that their children would no longer be learning how to swim in school. School directors closed the pools to save money, but money was shifted around this year and the pools are back open, which we're told eliminates overcrowding in school gyms and provides students with swimming skills. School director Bob Childs and Robert Kitansky from the Y fill us in on what else is planned at the pools. Uh, what we're hoping to be able to do with the pools is to keep them open uh, at least one day a week for each pool uh, to start with. Uh, and that would be after school, uh, probably from 6 to 8 in the evenings. Uh, we will be accommodating uh, individuals from roughly five years and up uh, with the expectation of having one adult for every four for every four kids that would be in the pool. Um, the, the goal here, of course, is, is to improve the health of the community. Uh, and I say that in, with tongue in cheek because on the one hand, we're talking uh, physical health of the individuals, but on the other hand, we're talking the health of the community in terms of family activities. We're talking in terms of health of the community in terms of, of integration of our various populations that are here. Mm -hmm. We like to think that this is a, a, a major step forward. Uh, part of our goal is obviously to outreach to the community and what better way to assist uh, with the school district in giving an, an after school program per se um, for a the, the entire community. Um, it's a perfect opportunity for social event, uh, social um, networking uh, with um, different diversity of our population. Um, it also gives us an opportunity for, from the Y standpoint, um, you know, to provide quality programs or open swim, so, mm -hmm. so to speak, and potentially lessons uh, for, for children to learn outside of the school setting. Um, it'll be one of the, the better programs, I, I believe, that are offered after school uh, with conjunction of the school teachers as well as our, our, our school district. Now, Dr. Child says he hopes to have the pool programs up and running by October 1st. Right now, workers are fixing the Heights Terrace pool, making it more user-friendly for the handicapped and doing some patching to the surface there. Some opening day glitches may have delayed the start of class Thursday morning, but how did the Hazleton Area School District perform the second time around? Well, administrators are more than pleased with students and staff members for their quick yet accurate performance. Students were inside the buildings 30 minutes earlier than the first time around. Administrators explained to News 13 how this was accomplished. They now know what to expect. They were actually ready today with uh, some, some of them had like kind of kind of like a sandwich bag. So it was see through and they put their jewelry, their belt and anything that would set off the metal detector so they were more efficient, they got through more, more readily. We were able to add additional metal detectors and an additional entrance in the front of the building for the females. The two additional detectors and the additional entrance certainly helped us get the females through in a more expeditious manner. Uh, the staff actually is, is looking at maybe a couple of more tweaks that they can make. Uh, and, and I was fortunate enough having seen a couple of places that I pointed a couple of things out to them this morning that they were going to talk about today um, to try and, and make it a, a, even a better process. I must say that students and staff have been very appreciative and in fact have thanked us for putting the detectors in place. They said they now feel safe in school. Now Principal Patron also visited several classrooms Friday morning to let students know their safety comes first. Patron adds this year classes will be longer, time in the hallway will be shorter, and academics will be at their finest. In addition, another metal detector will be added to the high school building next week, specifically for male and female athletes. This will be the third extra metal detector added to the building and should speed up the process, we're told, even more. Several parents waiting for their children to come home from their first day of school got a little scare after the school bus didn't show up. A bus that was scheduled for a double run at Heights Terrace Elementary School in Hazleton never came back for the second batch of students. Approximately 50 students had to wait in school for almost an hour until the bus was called to come back. Hazleton Area District administrators say it was miscommunication between the district and the driver. 
And oh this God. is not an unusual circumstance, believe it or not, for the first day or even the first few days of school, especially with double runs. It has happened before. No students were lost. Everyone was accounted for and everyone did get home. They were obviously getting home 50 minutes later than expected. By the time they got in touch with the, with the driver and, and had him turn around and go back uh, to the school, um, there had been a couple of calls that were made to transportation. Uh, how many, I don't have the exact number of calls that were made. Uh, at that point, students were, again, loaded onto the bus and sent uh, on their way. I know the secretaries in transportation uh, called some of the parents. Do I know that they called all of them? Uh, I don't, uh, because I didn't monitor every call that was being made. But they did uh, make an attempt to contact, my understanding is the majority of parents uh, of the students that were, um, that were uh, involved in, the, in this, you know, this mistake that was made. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is some of the parents are waiting at the bus stops for students, so when you call their home, you don't get anyone. Boundary changes and new routes could have sparked Thursday's confusion. Now the bus showed up for the second batch of students about an hour late, we're told, but until kids actually got home, it was even later than that. Administrators said that they did not plan on this mix-up happening again and say the driver would not be terminated. If you are a teen hoping to get a motorcycle license, listen up. A new law went into effect today requiring 16 and 17 year olds to first complete Pennsylvania's motorcycle safety training. Act 84 requires young riders seeking motorcycle licenses to first complete the Pennsylvania Motorcycle Safety Program's basic rider course, which is offered at nearly 70 sites across the state. The training is free to all Pennsylvania residents. Roughly 400,000 riders have gone through this proven safety training program since 1984. The course provides an introduction to the fundamentals of safe and responsible motorcycle operation and consists of 15 hours of classroom and riding instruction. The 15 hours can be applied toward the 65 hours of on the road training required for riders under 18 years old who have a motorcycle learner's permit. Information about the PAMSP training can be found at www.pamsp.com. Motorcycle safety information, including videos about the training programs and testimonials from graduates can be found at PennDOT's Live Free Ride Alive website at www.livefreeridealive.com. This new Pennsylvania law may help protect our teens, but what about those who are old enough to make their own decision? Governor Ed Rendell, former Governor Ed Rendell, I should say, passed the law to allow motorcyclists to choose whether or not they want to strap on a helmet. But the controversial topic is something many disagree on. What do you think? Do you think Pennsylvania should reinstate its helmet law? Should all motorcyclists be required to wear a helmet? Go to our Facebook page and join us in our latest social chatter. Tell us what you think. Or head to SSP TV where we have a poll going on right now. Well, we have some sad news to report tonight about a local woman who courageously battled cancer. You heard her story many times right here on News 13. Unfortunately, Cindy Fatula Elias passed away early this morning, surrounded by those who loved her most and knew her best, her family. Cindy was diagnosed with mesothelioma about two years ago. Every day, every minute, Cindy, with the support of her family and friends, of course, battled back against the disease that eventually took her life. Cindy endured a major surgery to remove the cancer and underwent round after round of treatment, all with a smile on her face and a positive attitude. While many around her were feeling the effects of her courageous yet tough battle, Cindy never lost hope and right up to the end was still spunky and bossing everyone around. I say that with a smile and a little tear because Cindy's sister, Dawn Crockford, is one of my closest friends. And just this morning, hours after Cindy passed, Dawn and I were still laughing at Cindy's demands for soda, not water. Cindy and her family, who is also bat Cindy and her father, excuse me, who is also battling cancer as we speak, were the recipients of funds raised from last year's Making a Difference golf tournament hosted by News 13 SSP TV at Sand Springs. Cindy leaves behind many loving friends and many family members who are filled with sorrow, yet at peace with the fact that their mother, sister, daughter, aunt, fiance, and friend is no longer in pain. 
Cindy's family wanted us to pass along their thanks to everyone who called, sent texts and Facebook messages, stopped by with well wishes, sent food and other deliveries today and over the past two years. They say the support and love shown by the community and by perfect strangers is heartwarming. On behalf of the LaSant family and all of us here at News 13, SSP TV, our deepest condolences to Cindy's family, friends, especially to her daughter Jenny, her fiance Gary, her sisters Dawn and Mary Beth, and of course, her parents. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Over 900,000 mangoes have been recalled. The tropical fruit sent to the U.S. from Mexico is potentially contaminated with salmonella. The brand called Daniela, we're told, was sold at all these stores. The mangoes were grown and harvested in Mexico and sold in the U.S. between July 12th and August 29th. Each piece of fruit was marked with a small sticker displaying a number. The numbers include 4051. 4959, 4311, 4584, or 3114. Now, if you bought any of these recalled mangoes, simply throw them away. Wounds, everyone gets them at some point, but for some people, wounds may require more than a little patience to heal. In fact, wounds can sometimes require specialized treatment and care. When you have to ask yourself, why won't it heal, you may have a problem, but thankfully professionals are there to help like Dr. Cynthia Lubinsky, who joined those concerned with their wounds at the Hazleton Health and Wellness Center Thursday night to discuss the non-surgical and surgical treatment options for wound care. Dr. Lubinsky says this is a problem. It is. It's a, a lot larger of a problem than we used to see. We have a lot of diabetic patients now, um, people with a lot of chronic swelling in the legs that cause wounds. Um, so, and in decreased mobility, mm -hmm. those are all issues that cause a lot of wounds that can sometimes impede healing. Dr. Lubinsky adds that complications from diabetes will cause the healing process to take longer. In addition to diabetes, age and vascular conditions can also cause a wound to slow, be slow to heal. Approximately 5.7 million Americans suffer from chronic non-healing wounds. Moving on tonight, TGIF everyone, the Labor Day weekend has finally arrived. Many will turn to outdoor activities for their last weekend of the summer season. So let's check on that forecast beginning tonight in Schuylkill County. Mostly clear skies will carry you through to your Saturday with a low down to 62 degrees. Here's your four day outlook. Saturday in Schuylkill County, it's gonna be sunny skies, 84. We'll dip down to 79 for your Sunday, but the sun remains. And for your Labor Day, there is a chance of some thunderstorms, possibly some showers moving on through. It will be mostly cloudy skies and a high up to 76. For Tuesday, showers are likely, possibly a thunderstorm cloudy with a high near 78. And Tuesday night, clouds stick around. Showers also with a low down to 63. Moving to Greater Hazelton, this creative condition comes from Gabriella Bastanini from West Hazelton Elementary School. Gabriella may just be right when it comes to the weather headed our way, at least for the first couple days. Here we go, mostly clear skies with a low down to 59 for the rest of this Friday. And as we look ahead to Saturday, look for sunny skies, high near 78. We'll dip down to 53 on your Saturday night. Skies remain clear and stay that way for Sunday. 73 will be our high. Sunday night, some clouds move in with a chance of showers at a low down to 61. Mostly cloudy on our Labor Day with showers and thunderstorms likely. 76 will be our high, 62 for our low Monday night with showers continuing into Tuesday and Tuesday night as well. Your forecast brought to you by Valley High Drive-In Route 93 in West Hazleton. Hey folks, summer isn't over yet. You still have time to head to Valley High, so make sure you do so today. All right, still ahead, some local students took their classroom outside this afternoon. We'll stop by MMI Preparatory School where the lesson was all about fun. Plus, Freddie B's on deck with sports on this very first football Friday. He'll fill us in on tonight's exciting rundown. Stay with us. Well, having fun and showing some school spirit is what it was all about today at MMI Preparatory School in Freeland. By having a little fun, students were able to make new friends. When he's 13 stopped by, the kids were having a ball both outside and inside the school. The day was run by the school's student council and it is a way to bring the student body together. This year, the school is bigger than ever with over 250 students. 
Today is Spirit Day at MMI, and what we do is the student council runs Spirit Day. They take the entire student body and put them on different teams, and that way all the kids get to meet each other for the, in the beginning of school. They get on the teams and they do different competitions, and you can see this year some of our competitions are the garbage lid toss, the beanbag toss, um, they're doing basketball in the gym, there's the dizzy bats out in the yard. So we do a bunch of different things so the kids all get to meet each other for the first day. Before they start, our parent faculty organization gives all the kids in the school a, a great lunch. Now the teams rotated to all different games that were going on and on Tuesday it'll be back to hitting the books for the students at MMI. That'll do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or simply go to News 13's website, ssptv.com. That's where you're going to find everything Greater Hazleton and beyond. It's all just a click away. Real quick, we wanted to pass along to you that services for Cindy Fatula Elias. We told you about her uh, passing earlier in the newscast today from her brave battle with mesothelioma. We're told everything is being handled by the Moran Funeral Home. Her viewing is Sunday from 3 to 7, and there will be a mass at 10 o'clock Monday morning at Good Shepherd Church in Drums. Have a nice weekend, everyone. We will see you back here on Labor Day Monday. Good night.